Hello, my name is Ms. Amanda Tozer. I'm a consultant gynaecologist, subspecialising in reproductive medicine. I'm going to talk to you today about the drugs we use in IVF, the possible side effects of those drugs and what they do. Often people take drugs for IVF without really knowing uh, what they're taking and what those drugs are doing. There aren't too many drugs we use in IVF, uh, but certainly uh, there are very set drugs and I'm going to go through them. One of the drugs we use is something called GnRH agonists. Now this is a drug most commonly used called bucerolin and it is a drug that is injected. You can also have this drug inhaled, so it's given as a sniffer. So you may uh, have heard that it can either be sniffed or injected. I most commonly use the injection type form. Bucerolin is a drug that will stop you from ovulating. So it's a very important drug in IVF treatment because we want to collect those eggs when we want to and we do not want women to ovulate naturally. The administration of bucerolin is very easy. It is given as a subcutaneous injection and it's given on a daily basis. Bucerolin can sometimes cause some mild headaches, but these usually subside and many women do complain that the injection causes them to feel quite tired. Again, this resolves very quickly. Does the drug have any long-term effects? Well, this is often a concern, of course, when taking drugs for IVF treatment, and no, it does not. The drug rapidly goes out of the system the minute you stop taking it, and you will, of course, stop taking it just prior to the egg collection procedure. So it is invariably only taken for a short time. The second type of drug we use is an injection type drug to stimulate the ovaries. There are a number of different companies that produce drugs that will stimulate the ovaries. Essentially they all contain the compound FSH. Your body naturally produces this, but this is a manufactured substance. It is either genetically engineered in the form of something called gonal F for example, or it is a urinary compound in the form of Menopure, for example. There are other compounds. All of them are injected. Do these cause problems? Well, these are the ones that are designed to stimulate your ovaries. So I suppose the most obvious first complication people might consider is the overstimulation of the ovaries, or something called hyperstimulation syndrome. Many people will have heard of this, and it is indeed a dangerous condition if severe. However, most people know how to manage it. Most people know, nowadays know how to reduce that risk. Everybody has an individual risk and of course, as a consultant, I would minimise those risks and give you the dose of drugs accordingly. Do these drugs cause any other problems? Do they cause cancer, for example, of the ovary? Well, no, long term they have not been shown to cause cancer of the ovary and long term they have not been shown to put people through an early menopause, which is another concern people have. I can put my hand on my heart and, and say that these drugs are safe with relatively few side effects, but of course need to be administered by experienced people. Most people of course inject their own drugs and you'll be taught how to do this. Do not panic, this is a relatively easy thing to do that you'll get very used to doing. Once, they've done the, once you have done the first injection, it'll be plain sailing. Another type of drug that is used is something called a GnRH antagonist. This is another injection and is usually given at around about day seven of the stimulation process. Again, you will be advised on when to do this. Again, you'll be shown how to do this. It is usually in the form of something called cetratide. This is a safe drug and is designed to suppress ovulation. So it works in a similar way to the bucerolin but it has a much faster acting and is given at a later time in the cycle. Again, there are no significant side effects with taking the antagonist. You then come to the drug called Ovitrel. Ovitrel is an injection, again, that is used to release the eggs. So in other words, it's designed to make you ovulate. The timing of this injection is very important for IVF treatment as we need to pick up those eggs before they've been released by the ovary. Ovitrel is a compound called HCG and is designed to release those eggs at a very specific time, 36 hours after the injection. So when it comes to you having your IVF treatment, 
you will be told to do this at a very particular time in relation to the egg collection. You may get some discomfort after taking this injection a few hours, but do not worry. There are really no side effects with taking the Ovitrel. The most important thing is to take it at the right time. The next group of drugs are the progesterone drugs. These are important to take with IVF treatment. All women will take progesterone supplementation in the second part of their cycle after the egg collection has been performed. You will be advised on the dose that you need to take and it takes many forms. Progesterone is always given intravaginally but it can take the form of either small tablets called eutrogestan, it can take the form of cyclogest pessaries and it can take the form of a gel called crinone gel. Both cyclogest and crinone can leave a residue and cause a discharge. Again, do not worry. The progesterone is well and truly absorbed within the first 10 minutes of administration and the discharge that you will experience is just the compound it is made up in. Eutrogestan is often associated with less discharge as it is small vaginal tablets. You will need to continue that treatment and sometimes progesterone can cause you to feel quite bloated and sometimes a little nauseous. Indeed, it can sometimes cause some premenstrual symptoms in women, as this is exactly the hormone that does cause premenstrual type symptoms.